Hello everyone, today is 4th of August, Sunday, so I hope you have a wonderful day and weekend. Now it's 10 to 10 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for a day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Later on today, about 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening Moscow time, I will have a live stream, traditional Sunday live stream, and I hope you will find time to join the conversation it's, it's gonna be community chat first of all and also a news summary uh, uh, of course and it's gonna be good fun uh, as it always is uh, so yes five or six o'clock uh, this evening moscow time live stream on main youtube channel that's been said uh, let's talk about news now and first of all i'll give you this uh, report from zgliad newspaper which is based on statements of uh, Major General of Russian Armed Forces, Commander of Ahmad Special Forces, Abtia Laudino, according to whom Russian troops establish uh, control over the, at least uh, half of their high-rise apartment buildings in Volchansk, in this uh, so-called Citadel area. And if we zoom in in this uh, direction, this is Volchansk, of course, and this is Citadel, by the way. As you can see, it's like two dozen of uh, high-rise high -rise apartment buildings. This is main stronghold of Kyiv regime troops uh, in the northern part of Volchansk. And according to Aptia Laudin, uh, about half of these high-rise apartments are under full Russian control now, which is uh, significant progress. And I believe once the uh, entire citadel will be controlled by Russian troops, Kyiv regime would not be able to maintain its presence for a longer in the rest of the this northern part of uh, Chisovyar that is still formally controlled by Q regime troops because uh, uh, this uh, rest of the uh, city is uh, low-rise buildings, uh, private housing, uh, which is not really allowing uh, troops to uh, hide and to create some uh, some strongholds. So therefore, I guess the battle for northern part of Chisovyar is uh, nearing its uh, its end. And uh, I know, uh, dear friends, that there are rumors uh, constantly circulating on the internet that the regime is about to start sectoral scale offensive operation on northern uh, Kharkov uh, area, northern parts of Kharkov region, including in Volchansk direction. And some uh, experts even are going as far as to claim that the regime might be able to not just regain control over the buffer zone that Russian troops created in the last two months, but also enter Russian territory, Belgorod region, for example. Uh, I'm no military expert, dear friends, uh, I said this many, many times, uh, and I don't pretend to know uh, uh, military stuff uh, much, but in my reading of the big picture, it is completely impossible the regime to uh, achieve any success on any direction on the line of contact, including Kharkov region. I don't believe that uh, the regime troops are able to pull off sectoral, at least sectoral scale offensive uh, operation successfully. I just don't believe in this. Yes, the regime probably has about 9,000 military personnel concentrated in uh, Kharkov region. Theoretically, this is a uh, quite big number. Uh, that will be enough for a sectoral scale offensive, but uh, uh, what, uh, what is the readiness, battle readiness of these troops? It's also an important question, isn't it? Because uh, majority, vast majority of troops that the regime concentrated on northern parts of Kharkov region are forcefully mobilized citizens of Ukraine that don't want anything to have with this uh, conflict. They don't want to fight they were trying to escape Ukraine unsuccessfully. They were forcefully mobilized, kidnapped basically from their, from their homes, from the streets uh, on Kyiv controlled territory. So what you expect these uh, brigades that are filled with, their, with their, uh, such a military personnel going to achieve? On the very first opportunity, they will drop their arms and surrender, right? So... Uh, Let's be let's be real here. Let's be real, man. No way, no way, Kyiv regime uh, will uh, manage to achieve success in any direction, including northern parts of Kharkov. 
region, even if Zelensky will make decision to sacrifice this 90,000 military personnel also and uh, orders them to launch this sectoral scale offensive. Russian troops will just, uh, you know, decimate whatever brigades uh, they come up against with. And the best decision that the Russian troops can make in this and the area, the direction is to contact Russian troops. So there are several radio waves, radio frequencies, especially for that. They can contact Russian troops and arrange safe surrender. That's the best they can do. Otherwise, Russian troops will have no option but to take action. Let's continue. Let's continue. Ria Novosti is uh, reporting about Russian long-range precise strike on the military warehouses of the regime and also points of concentration of, uh, of troops in Chuguev, which is also Kharkov, uh, also Kharkov region. This is Chuguev, by the way, this, uh, this town. And, uh, uh, well, according to Russian partisans, or pro-Russian partisans, Russian troops conducted a series of uh, attacks, long-range strikes on the warehouses uh, and also points of concentration of Kyiv regime troops in this area. Successfully, no detailed information about uh, losses, casualty number on part of Kyiv regime or what uh, what military equipment was destroyed in those warehouses. But uh, uh, local partisans are confirming uh, precise strikes. Uh, uh, Ria Novosti is also reporting that, uh, well, Western media, by the way, still uh, uh, still trying to um, still tries to create these false narratives in the in, among public that Kyiv regime is still uh, very much capable and they are about to conduct uh, offensive in that direction and uh, in other direction and for example, business insider this. Uh, Idiots, uh, uneducated idiots in the Business Insider come up with the article uh, How the regime gonna regain control <laughs> over the Crimea? This is laughable, of course. There is uh, not even slight chance, by the way, not even theoretical chance that the regime will ever be able to regain control over, over any Russian city. Uh, nothing to be said in, about the entire peninsula, Crimean peninsula. But this is yet again pure demonstration, clear demonstration of this, uh, how these fake narratives have been created by Western ruling class, their propaganda outlets to keep majority of the public in the West in the dark. And this way, all these allocations of additional billions and billions and billions will be unchallenged. So yes, Business Insider is, uh, is writing about uh, upcoming Ukrainian offensive towards Crimea and uh, how difficult it's going to be for the regime and even F-16s might not be enough because the uh, regime needs three to five times more military personnel than uh, uh, Russian troops in this <laughs> in this direction. But yet again, this narrative itself that the regime may start some offensive in Crimea direction, that's the point here. That's the point that they want to uh, push over the public in the West that, you know what, the regime don't yet lost, uh, Western ruling class did not yet lost uh, this uh, proxy war against Russia. But while in reality, as I said, man, no, not even theoretical chance that the regime will come up with some uh, uh, large scale offensive operations. It's just not happening. But unfortunately, unfortunately, people in the West majority are reading or listening to this uh, propaganda propagandists that are working under Western ruling class and probably they truly believe in this nonsense. Uh, and they probably are expecting that if not today, tomorrow, oh, the regime is going to uh, win this, uh, this uh, conflict and uh, maybe they're going to enter Moscow. <laughs> I don't know. Man. It's crazy, man. RT is reporting, RT is reporting that uh, Russia reports a record level of uh, terrorism, which is uh, very unfortunate. Russia has seen an uh, alarming surge in crimes linked with uh, terrorism and uh, extremism in the first half of this uh, year, according to data released by the country's interior ministry. According to a document posted on the ministry's official website earlier this week, 
1,651 crimes classified as a terrorism were recorded in the country in January June 2024, a nearly 40% increase over the same period of 2023. The ministry noted that for the same period from uh, 2006 uh, to 2023, the figure did not reach 1,400. Previous record high was registered in the first half of 2022 when 1,332 terrorism-linked crimes were recorded and uh, of course this is unfortunate uh, data and uh, of course Russian security services uh, have a difficult task on their hands. They are working 24-7 to neutralize all the terrorist, uh, terrorist threats and they are doing so quite successfully. A majority of uh, uh, planned terrorist attacks are uh, prevented and terrorists are neutralized. But uh, if you remember, I said quite a number of times before in previous updates that because Western ruling class and their puppets in the Kyiv regime were unable to isolate Russia to uh, to win uh, politically, they were unable to destroy economy of Russia, Western ruling class. Despite this sanction war, they were unable to isolate Russia and of course they were unable to beat Russia on the battlefield despite of some 300 billion that was already sent there as money and weapons to the regime. Uh, I, was, I was saying that uh, it is highly likely that Western ruling class and their assets in the regime will turn to terrorism activity uh, out of desperation and uh, unfortunately this is exactly what is uh, happening and numbers, statistics from uh, Russian Interior Ministry is uh, confirming this. News, uh, I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid uh, this high threat of uh, terrorism from the Western ruling class and their assets in Kyiv regime or in extreme uh, extremist groups uh, worldwide that were created by CIA, world's most dangerous terrorist organization, of course, risks of, of terrorism from those uh, uh, groups uh, will maintain on a high level until Russia will finally neutralize this uh, key regime and uh, liberates liberates uh, historical Russian land from this uh, occupation force, basically. Western occupation uh, regime. RIA Novosti is reporting that the uh, uh, foreign minister of uh, Hungary directly blamed uh, Brussels for being involved in the uh, energy blockade of uh, Hungary. Uh, and uh, Peter C. Arto is, uh, is saying that uh, uh, this uh, gives decision gives decision to uh, block oil transit from Russia to Hungary through Kyiv controlled territory was coordinated with the Brussels. And I believe personally that this uh, action was ordered to Kyiv regime from Brussels. This was order from Brussels. I'm 100% convinced in that. And uh, we all know uh, difficulties in relationships between Budapest and Brussels, between Bratislava, capital of Slovakia, and, uh, and Brussels, and all because of the current leadership of these countries, EU and NATO member states, by the way, uh, uh, Hungary and Slovakia, uh, leadership of those countries are trying to protect their national interests of, the, of, their, own, of their homelands, and their best interests of their people. But uh, Brussels and Western ruling class, they are not happy with this because they want client states to be to act under order always without question being asked. And uh, Hungary and Slovakia clearly disagree with that and they've been punished now. Western ruling class is bullying Hungary and Slovakia and by the way, maybe really it is time for both these republics to reconsider their presence in these uh, uh, terrorist organizations. Uh, NATO, uh, terrorist organization that is uh, to be blamed on killing of hundreds of thousands of civilians worldwide in the last uh, several decades only, you know, just in the last several decades. Uh, and EU, by the way, is clearly also a terrorist organization, undoubtedly. Uh, run by terrorists and mass murderers and Nazi sympathizers, right? So maybe it is time for Budapest and uh, Bratislava to reconsider their presence in the in these 
terrorist organizations. What they lost it in, in NATO or in EU. They what? They've been insulted, they've been assaulted, they've been uh, humiliated by uh, the so-called Western partners. So maybe it is really time to, you know, look around. World is changing, multipolar world is emerging. It's just uh, very much visible. Uh, BRICS is here. And uh, BRICS is a force. BRICS is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, so, you know, it's not up to me. It's up to citizens of uh, Hungary and Slovakia. But they should really think about their future. Are they really want to be part of these terrorist organizations, man? And client states uh, or slaves of the Brussels? I don't think so. Anyways, let's continue. RT is reporting that uh, Ukraine downgraded to selective uh, defaulter. S&P Global rating, uh, ratings uh, has uh, lowered Ukraine's credit rating to selective default after Kyiv missed an international bond payment earlier this week as it seeks a major debt restructuring uh, not surprising absolutely not surprising by the way um, western uh, taxpayers uh, i'm afraid uh, will 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 pay again for the key regime to bail out Zelensky and his criminal associates uh, which is unfortunate obviously for uh, western taxpayers but uh, as long as they are not challenging their political elites that's how it's gonna be People may uh, be not happy in uh, European states, uh, in uh, US or in Canada that uh, there are plenty of issues uh, and uh, money needed to resolve those issues. Uh, and I'm not talking about just uh, crumbling infrastructure, by the way, in the West. There are so many other issues that uh, uh, all those billions and billions and billions that uh, uh, Western ruling class sent to the regime formally could be used to resolve in the West, but uh, it's not happening and will not happen until majority in the West, majority of the public in the West are not challenging their own uh, criminal, I will say, criminal, uh, inhuman, so-called political elites. It is what it is. And uh, when it comes to modern Ukraine's uh, uh, default or debt, well, I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid uh, it's the Western taxpayers that will pay for, uh, for expenses of Zelensky and his uh, associates. But anyways, uh, let's continue. And dear friends, uh, if I may, let me uh, remind you, if I may, that this small media project of mine with uh, several channels on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram is uh, completely subscriber funded. And uh, if you like my work, uh, if you if you uh, want to support, you can do it through PayPal, Boosty, or by subscribing to my Patreon page. And this is my Patreon page, by the way. Uh, I have uh, at this point probably hundreds of uh, hundreds of videos on uh, uh, on Patreon, not just about news and politics, but also about life in, in in russia and i'm trying to make you know maintain pages on patreon as a uh, as informative and interesting and entertaining as i can and i have some ideas to create more content especially from uh, september uh, i'm working on some ideas sir. and uh, yes if you if you can please subscribe to my patreon right now our community is 154 members and once uh, we will reach 200 uh, I, I, I would be able to say that, you know, this project is finally out of this danger zone when, uh, when every single month uh, survivability of the project is, uh, is questioned. So please, if you can, subscribe on my Patreon. Or if you have some issues with Patreon, you can subscribe on Boosty also. Uh, that's how Boosty looks. Sir. Interesting platform, very useful. Um, and you can donate from Boosty. I mean, you can not just subscribe to my page to have access to bonus videos, bonus content, but uh, you can donate from 
Patreon uh, from uh, Boosty. Also, all the links are, of course, under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment. And subscription, by the way, monthly subscription on uh, Patreon starts uh, uh, from five dollars, and then you can choose your level of uh, supporter. There is options there. So yes, that's been uh, said. Uh, I really hope we will manage to make uh, some miracle and reach 200 uh, members uh, on on Patreon before end of this summer. That would be uh, uh, that would be miracle, uh, really. But with your support, maybe maybe we can do this. Let's continue. And the uh, Commerçant newspaper is reporting that, according to Axios, uh, Western media outlet, uh, U.S. and Israel are expecting strike, retaliatory strike from Iran against uh, Israel tomorrow on a Monday, on 5th of um, August. And uh, of course, this retaliatory strike is connected with the recent assassination of uh, Hamas political uh, leader. Ismail Hanir in Tehran, in capital of uh, Iran, and very strong statements were made by uh, officials in Iran about uh, uh, response, about uh, response on this uh, attack. And uh, yes, I mean, world is now uh, kind of uh, uh, stuck in this uh, in this situation when uh, no one really knows. Uh, uh, how much things will escalate on on the middle middle east in upcoming days uh, i reported in previous updates that uh, more and more more and more uh, countries are recommending their citizens to flee israel to flee lebanon to flee iran uh, air, airliners uh, uh, aviation companies worldwide are suspending their flights to uh, these free countries so even in in some others, Jordan, for example, several companies are suspending flights even in Jordan, which is neighbor of Israel, of course, and the West Bank. And uh, yes, things are escalating. Things are uh, escalating. And I can give you, by the way, uh, this information also, that uh, this is latest uh, statement from Iberia Express and Air Europa. Uh, Avio companies that are suspending their flights to Tel Aviv, for example, and uh, right now, according to TASS News Agency and Israeli media, about 100,000 Israeli citizens are strengthened worldwide and cannot go back to Israel due to the suspensions of their flights. And uh, according to Israeli 12th channel, uh, Israeli government is recommending citizens it's uh, its own citizens to fly to greece and uh, cyprus because there is still flights available from cyprus and uh, and greece so crisis is uh, is uh, escalating on daily on daily basis and of course uh, and of course uh, uh, clashes between uh, uh, idf uh, and uh, Lebanese Hezbollah is, uh, is also on, uh, on rise. And for example, last night, Hezbollah launched a uh, couple of dozens of uh, rockets towards northern Israel. And according to Ria Novosti's report, about 30 rockets were intercepted by Iron Israeli air defense uh, systems. Um, although several, several rockets managed to go through and uh, reach their targets so yes things are escalating uh, on daily on daily basis uh, and uh, one should also keep in mind that u.s is uh, sending already send uh, uh, aircraft strike group uh, cruisers uh, frigates towards the uh, middle east to participate in defending israel so it is highly likely that some some big escalation is about to happen although me personally i hope uh, i really hope uh, iran leadership of iran will will retaliate with uh, restraint with restraint uh, to make a point but uh, not to allow netanyahu's government and the western ruling class to provoke regional war because it will be devastating for a region and for a world by the way and uh, no one will benefit with exception of those psychopaths, at least that's what they think, I guess. Uh, 
Netanyahu is government and the Western ruling class that you know, probably they think they will benefit from uh, original war there, but uh, region itself and the world world economy uh, will definitely suffer from uh, from that. So let's hope let's hope Iran's response will be measured uh, enough to make a point, but uh, but also restrained so that. Uh, uh, Western ruling class will have no opportunity to use it as a, another reasoning to further escalate. Let's see, we will find out in upcoming days. Uh, RT is also reporting that, uh, well, according to Maduro, president of uh, Venezuela, Musk, Elon Musk, head of uh, SpaceX, uh, Tesla, Neuralink, and, uh, and a bunch of other companies, I guess. Uh, According to Maduro, Elon Musk is a leading coup d'etat attempt in Venezuela. So Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro on Friday accused the US government and South African tycoon Elon Musk of attempting to overthrow his government, orchestrate a coup d'etat in, uh, in the country. And he has a point, isn't it? He clearly has a point. Uh, of course, CIA and Washington, Langley and Washington are involved in this uh, uh, in this uh, attempted color revolution in Venezuela, they are unsuccessful for now, but uh, of course, time is needed to have a better understanding how strong uh, and how united Maduro's government is, and uh, uh, and uh, if they will be able to overcome all all the all the obstacles that uh, Western ruling class is creating with their assets in, uh, in Venezuela. Uh, but when it comes to Elon Musk, by the way, okay, I mean, nobody is surprised to hear that uh, Washington is involved in uh, yet another coup d'etat attempt. Uh, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's, uh, that's what Washington does. But, but that's what U.S. Secret Services do. And that's what Washington does. They are uh, overthrowing governments, uh, historically speaking, uh, whenever they don't like them. But uh, in, in regards to Elon Musk, it is really disappointing that he is this much involved in this uh, CIA coup d'etat operation. And uh, many people worldwide, including myself, uh, uh, lost any respect for Elon Musk because of this... Uh, because of this... Uh, involvement of his in this uh, CIA operation. Um, this is wrong. This is wrong. Uh, uh, I don't know why he is doing this, but uh, he lost uh, all the credibility if, in my personal eyes, in, in my personal opinion. Uh, you tell me what you think, but uh, it's bad, man. It's bad. Many people were seeing Elon Musk as a sort of uh, Iron Man of modern times. Uh, he made quite a strong stance when it comes to freedom of speech. Uh, um, uh, he was, uh, he is quite active lately, at least, uh, in regards to battling this uh, woke culture, this crazy woke woke culture, and uh, and cancel culture. He has some understandable stance in a number of directions, but why he get involved in this uh, coup d'etat attempt in Venezuela? When he is uh, publishing on his page on X, by the way, some fake news that was already debunked. I don't know, man. I don't get it. What is wrong with him, man? But it is, it is what it is. What are you going to do about it? You know what he is reporting also? That uh, about uh, more than 2,000 uh, protesters have been detained in uh, Venezuela during this uh, anti-governmental uh, actions uh, that were financed and organized by Western assets and Western secret services. Uh, I guess uh, majority of those people, if they didn't commit uh, some, uh, some, uh, some heavy crimes, uh, will be released once the situation will de-escalate. Uh, but uh, for time being, probably this number will continue to increase. RT is reporting, RT is reporting that uh, Harris, Kamala Harris, refuses uh, Fox News debate with uh, Trump. Uh, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has 
declined former President Donald Trump's invitation to take part in a televised debate on Fox News next month, insisting that the Republican candidate uh, should stick to a previously agreed uh, showdown on ABC News. So earlier there was agreement between Trump's camp and Biden's camp that they should be second debates on ABC. But uh, Biden is out of uh, presidential race now, so I guess uh, things have changed and uh, now Trump wants debates to take place on Fox News, <coughs> which is understandable. He already uh, debated their uh, opponent on a neolib platform. It was CNN, isn't it? And uh, it does make sense sir, if he wants now to debate uh, his opponent different one but still on a more friendly a uh, platform on a conservative platform like uh, fox news but uh, i don't know for whatever reason kamala harris is against this and uh, okay i mean biden can uh, sorry trump can debate uh, kamala harris <laughs> on any platform really because i don't think it's gonna be too hard uh, Trump can uh, just uh, take a map, world map, and ask Kamala to point out Washington City on a map. And I really doubt Kamala Harris will be able to find, point out, pinpoint Washington City, by the way, on a map. Nothing to be said about uh, uh, Brussels, for example, which is, uh, I mean, Brussels uh, hosting... EU bureaucracy, NATO bureaucracy, it's, a, it's a, one of the major capitals, sir, one may argue, in this world. And I don't think she will be able to pinpoint Brussels. I don't think she will be able to find uh, Israel on the political map or Iran, for that matter. I'm not quite sure she can even find Russia on the map. Although, uh, on, the, on the northern side of the map, on the northern latitudes, I mean, it is difficult to miss russia isn't it because it's uh, it's biggest country in this world but uh, point that i want to make is that kamala harris is uh, extremely poorly educated and all trump needs to do is uh, to highlight this you know she may be good person in 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 life but to be a president of a major superpower in this world uh, i guess her uh, intellect is needed and uh, Harris is not really intellectual, in my personal opinion. And that's it. So therefore, uh, I don't see why Trump wouldn't debate her on any platform, really. But let's see. Let's see, by the way. Uh, I'm not saying Trump is genius, by the way. No, but uh, I mean, he, he definitely leaves an impression that he is uh, much better informed. He has much better knowledge about uh, internal affairs, about uh, some geopolitical stuff and situation worldwide than Kamala Harris will ever will. I mean, objectively speaking. That's the impression that I, I have, sir. You know, Art is uh, also reporting that uh, U.S. unemployment uh, ticks up. Uh, so U.S. unemployment rate uh, rise for the fourth straight months in July to 4.3 percent, up to up from 4.1 percent the previous month. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported on Friday the figure is the highest since the onset of the pandemic. Uh, U.S. added just 114,000 jobs last month, down from 206,000 recorded in June and well below the 215,000 jobs per month added over the uh, last 12 months. The data shows uh, economics polled by Reuters had uh, expected the figure to increase by 175,000. The number of unemployment people across the US rose by 352,000 to 7.2 million, a notable increase from the 5.9 million registered a year earlier when the jobless rate was 3.5%. Well, 4.3% is not a catastrophic number, obviously. Uh, many countries would, uh, would love to have uh, such a number. 
of un unemployment, but uh, still it's uh, it's indicator. It's indicator that U.S. economy may not feel as well as uh, as good as as some might uh, hope. Um, but yet again, uh, if you consider what kind of government U.S. has, uh, should we should we be surprised that there are some uh, difficulties uh, in terms of uh, economy or uh, uh, unemployment? I don't think so. But yet again, 4.3% is not nothing extraordinary. Uh, here in Russia, unemployment rate is, uh, I don't know, 2 or 3%, which is also uh, nothing extraordinary. It's an extremely low number. Uh, so 4.3% is also uh, not that high. RT is uh, reporting that uh, right-wing riots break out across uh, UK. On my Telegram, I published a number of uh, videos about uh, confrontation of uh, citizens of UK with, uh, with police because uh, people are tired of this uh, increase in crime, um, which uh, some people are connecting with, uh, with the migration uh, processes. Uh, although, by the way, I, I, I don't understand why RT is uh, making this headline that right-wing uh, riots. So why these people are right-wing? It's just the people that fed up with their uh, high crime in their country. I mean, do they have a right to be mad because of the increasing crimes? Uh, you know? Nowadays, if you protest, by the way, you're going to get called uh, like a right extremist or something straight away. What the hell, man? But anyway, let's, let's go through this news, by the way. So, demonstrators have turned violent in UK as anti-immigration protests clashed with the police over the murder of three children by a teenager of African descent earlier this week. More than 30 protests, uh, protests uh, were held on Saturday in Cities including Liverpool, Nottingham, Leeds, Belfast, Stockholm, Trent, Blackpool, and uh, Hull. The demonstrators came almost a week after riots. Demonstrations came almost a week after riots broke out in the town of uh, Southport following the alleged fatal stabbing of the three children and wounding of uh, 10 others by Axel. Ruda Kubana, a 17-year-old born in Britain to Rwandan parents. Uh, the Southport riots spread across England with uh, more than 100 people arrested in London on Wednesday and the police station set on fire in uh, Sunderland on Friday. Uh, yes, I, I shared video of that burning police station in uh, Sunderland. People are mad, by the way, and they're... Uh, and uh, they have a point. They have a point, by the way. This uh, uh, increase in crimes when uh, these gangsters, uh, these these gangsters are running on the streets with machetes, by the way. And, and I mean, this is crazy. This is not normal. Uh, some videos from UK are. Uh, if you did not know that that was UK, you might think this is this is some some failed state where there is no more law and order or something. That's how bad situation is, is, is in, in, in UK. Uh, so people are mad and I would not call them a right wing or, or extremist. It's just ordinary people in my understanding that fed up with this nonsense and want to live in safety and in, in peace. That's all. And when it comes to crimes, by the way, uh, in my personal opinion, criminals have no nationality. Criminals are criminals, so therefore, uh, uh, protesters also everywhere, everywhere should keep in mind this: that uh, criminals have no nationality. It's uh, it's better to focus on main issues, uh, which is uh, which is uh, crime, uh, which is migration. Yes, because there are more more illegal migrants, uh, or even sometimes legal migrants. Uh, probably means uh, additional pressure on social fabric 
it may be a reasoning for uh, increasing crime also as it is a case in uh, in number of countries worldwide by the way russia is also not immune to uh, crimes committed by migrants they are legal migrants by the way uh, majority of them uh, but still uh, i mean some people are just uh, bad individuals and the bad people i mean they're bad apples everywhere so therefore i don't think uh, uh, people's uh, ethnicity or race to to be articulated when there is talks about some unrest in the public or or, or crime because criminals have no nationality they are criminals but uh, focus should be on on main issues which is in case of uk as far as i understand this is rising crimes gang violence and also illegal migration and uh, i think uh, i think uh, people have every right to have strong opinions on these uh, issues and i would not call them a right wing by the way why are they right wing maybe they are you know maybe some people among those protesters are i don't know members of communist party who who knows and how are we gonna call someone from communist party a right winger i mean come on this is bad when when straight away people being divided you know this is ultra left this is ultra right there are universal topics that majority of societies are in support of no matter their political ideology left right center who cares uh, there are issues that needs to be resolved RT is reporting that uh, Russian software used to design British submarines, <laughs> according to Telegraph. This is a uh, this is interesting news, by the way. Uh, I would not be surprised at all if uh, if uh, Alex Christoforo, host of Duran Show, will use this news in his uh, clown show. Uh, and dear friends, I mentioned uh, Alexander uh, Alex Christoforo now, and uh, also the Glad newspaper today uh, reported about statements of Alexander Mercuris about situation on the uh, Ukrainian battlefield and uh, and if you are not familiar with uh, this host so Duran show under this video in the description box uh, you can find the uh, you can find the recommendation list of the channels that I follow and uh, there is a link to Duran channel and the personal channels of uh, channels of Alexander and Alexander uh, and Alex and uh, yes, I would not be surprised at all if Alex will use this news uh, in his clown show uh, because it is uh, it is uh, it is clown show <laughs> really. Let's go through this news. Uh, a firm hired to design software for a British submarine builder uh, outsourced uh, the job to programmers in Belarus and Russia. <coughs> the Telegraph reported on friday according to british defense ministries a document seen by the newspaper the company then tried to cover up the potential security breach their company a digital consultancy firm called the wm reply was hired in 2020 to build a staff intranet for rolls royce submarines telegraph reported Rolls-Royce uh, is nuclear engineers who designed submarines uh, solely for the Royal Navy would use this intranet to communicate while at work without the security risks of being uh, connected to their wider internet. Given the sensitive nature of the Rolls-Royce submarines work, British Defense Ministry rules uh, stipulated that the internet be uh, intranet be designed only by uk based staff with security clearances instead uh, wm uh, reply outsourced uh, much of their work to uh, coders programmers in belarus and one who worked uh, remotely from tomsk in siberia in russia by late 2020 staff of uh, wm reply this uh, british contractor to defense ministry reply uh, were uh, concerned about using contractors based uh, in an uh, adversary of the uk Trans transcripts of the conference call handed through defense ministry investigators 
revealed that the company opted not to tell Rolls-Royce about their outsourcing uh, less their contract worth 500,000 pounds or 640,000 uh, dollars be cancelled. Uh, one employee of the call suggested giving the Belarusian coders the names of the dead people in UK, while another recommended having one British developer comply all the code created in Belarus and Russia to make it seem as, it, uh, as if uh, the entire entirety of the software was built in uh, U U UK. Eventually, Rolls-Royce was uh, told that uh, some foreign coders would be used, but the company was not informed that those coders would be based in Russia on, or Belarus. Documents handed to the Defense Ministry alleged. So interesting, isn't it? This uh, British vanguard, it's a vanguard nuclear submarines, isn't it? That Rolls-Royce is building. So <laughs> this, uh, these uh, submarines were using codes that were written by Russian and Belarusian programmers. This is a big security breach, by the way. Uh, this is big security breach because the Defense Ministry of UK, as far as I understand, was very clear that everyone who is working on these softwares should have a clearance. But, uh, I mean, uh, you tell me what is going on in UK, by the way. You tell me how they outsourced <laughs> work to programmers in Belarus and Russia. Yes, Belarus and Russia has one of the top programmers in this world. That's, that's factual. But still, by the way, uh, I mean, uh, it's defense ministry's uh, contract, isn't it? So how they risk it? Uh, and I wonder, I wonder if uh, Belarusian or, or Russian security services, uh, if they were, you know, if they had uh, access to these these programs, and through this program, maybe they gain access to all the other programs that. Uh, these vanguard nuclear submarines are using or British Navy, who knows, man, who knows, but story is definitely some very strange one, A very strange one, man. Anyways, let's, uh, let's continue, RT is reporting, and the U UK has, by the way, like four vanguard nuclear submarines, isn't it? Uh, two of them supposed to be operational constantly and two on repairs, but uh, last time, I see news about vanguards. Uh, only one submarine was uh, battle ready, really. But anyways, let's continue. RT is reporting that Russian uh, resource exports to China surge in 2020. All Russian trade with uh, China topped 65 billion in the first half of the year, with the uh, levels of uh, natural resource exports hitting new heights. Vedomosti reported on Monday, citing Chinese customs data. Exports of Russian goods to China jumped by 4% year-on-year. Terms uh, surging to record 65.2 billion US dollars between January and June of this year, with oil and gas supplies according, accounting for nearly 90% of shipments, according to latest figures in the reported period. China purchased uh, mineral oil and uh, other petroleum products worth of total of uh, 50 billion compared to 47 billion in the same period of last year. In just six months of 2024, Russian oil producers sold over 55 billion tons of uh, 55 billion US dollar worth uh, crude to China, a 5% increase compared to last year. The average price tug for Russian oil exports jumped by 9% in the first half from the same period of last year, amounting to $80.3, $80 basically per barrel, which is, uh, uh, of course, in a breach of uh, West $60 per barrel price cap, not surprisingly, uh, not surprisingly. So even Japan buys Russian oil, by the way. Uh, for for seventy dollars or something, seventy seventy five, higher than this uh, so called price cap on sixty dollars that Western ruling class um, 
imposts or so, yes interesting uh, interesting statistics uh, simultaneously by the way russian aluminium shipments to china have been growing at the record pace and have surged by 64 percent in annual terms to 1.8 billion us dollars according to official statistics exports of other commodities have also been on the rise supplies of met metal ores grew by 15 percent to 2.3 billion this year while timber exports uh exports increased by two percent to 1.7 billion data shows uh, bilateral cooperation between russia and china has been growing at the unprecedented rate rate over their past two years and uh, continues to accelerate trade turnover hit uh, historical high of 240 billion in annual terms last year with exports and imports surging at uh, <coughs> double digit pace which is <coughs> great which is uh, great news for russia and china i don't know about western ruling class and also by the way rt is reporting that uh, new delhi approves mega port to boost uh, russia india trade which is also great also greater uh, there is a huge potential in trade between russia and india and whatever steps are made to boost trade between the two countries sir uh, i welcome of course so indian government has approved their proposal for building a large port on its western coast to connect it with the major global trader network and boost trade with russia new daily announced on friday the port to be built uh, in uh, Wathawan in the maharashtra state uh, would aid uh, trade flow through the international north south transportation corridor INSTC and the uh, India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor IMEC according to announcements uh, proposed in 2000 the uh, 7200 uh, kilometer longer INSTC was um, meant to transport goods from india to russia via iran as an alternative to the conventional Suez channel route however the project has yet to be fully implemented the condit has uh, once again assumed significance uh, in uh, view of a sharp spike in trade between india and uh, russia during his visit to moscow in july indian prime minister Narendra Modi stressed the importance of improving connectivity with Russia, which would mean develop, developing the INSTC uh, trade route uh, project. The two countries set to trade target 400 billion by 2030. Well, 100 billion, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it may sound a lot, but I believe potential in trade between Russia and India is much, much higher. And uh, if uh, if uh, these uh, projects that are in the works between the sides will uh, will be fast tracked, uh, um, I guess uh, um, in fairly short time, in fairly short time, maybe not for 2030, but maybe towards the middle of this century, trade between Russia and India will reach two, three hundred billion a year. That would be uh, great, or even more, by the way, because. Uh, India, India is on a, uh, on its way to become a world, sir. Uh, if not first, then second economy for sure. Uh, India will outclass uh, US in next uh, 20, 30 years, by the way. And uh, and as you know, in terms of uh, GDP or PPP index, and therefore, of course, um, of course, there is a huge potential, huge potential there for uh, russia and india to further increase cooperation and finally i will share with you this information that russia entered the first three countries in the world with the lowest uh, state uh, debt on this uh, on this uh, planet uh, you know what let me translate this news uh, to be more precise and uh, so russia has taken a third place among the world's largest economies in terms of the lowest level of public debt 
per capita according to data from the G20 countries. The average figure of the group is over 23,000 and uh, in some of their world's uh, leading economies uh, it exceeds 50,000. I guess this is US and Japan, by the way, both countries have multi-trillion uh, debt. Uh, in the in the first half of this uh, year, there was only two thousand seventy six dollars of public debt per per uh, capita in, in terms of Russia, which allowed it to, to enter the top three. After India, uh, thousand three hundred and sixteen dollar per capita, and Indonesia, one thousand seven hundred and forty seven per capita. The level of public debt per capita also does not exceed 5,000 in Turkey, China, and South Africa. In Brazil, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, and Argentina, this figure ranges from 5 to 10,000. And of course, records, uh, uh, records are belonging to these negative records in this, uh, in this particular case, belongs to, I guess, Japan and, uh, and US, of course, because US is US. Uh, national debt uh, reached 35 trillion already, isn't it? And every couple of months, debt is increasing for another trillion, which is crazy, by the way, which is insane. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do about it? Uh, government of US is, uh, is borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and, uh, and printing these dollars like uh, hotcakes, man. I wonder how long, how long... Uh, dollar be able to maintain this uh, pressure and uh, this is it for now quite a long update quite a long update but hopefully you will find it uh, informative and interesting and if so please click that like button and leave some commentary just about anything any topic this is the only way we can try at least to deal with the uh, algorithm to reach wider audience and uh, for very same reason if you can please uh, share information about my channel with your friends in real life or um, on internet on on platforms that you are actively using and finally if you like uh, my work and want to support uh, you can do it through paypal boosty or by subscribing to my patreon page uh, all the links are under this video in the description box and in the pinned um, comment subscribe to my patreon if you can as i said the uh, monthly subscription starts from five dollars a month and uh, i mean maybe we can reach uh, 200 uh, on patreon by the way that will be i mean huge huge for this small media project of mine because uh, i believe uh, once our community on patreon will reach to 200 we will uh we will no longer stay in this uh, in this um, danger zone when uh, every other month is uh, is a fight for for survivability. So yes, dear friends, uh, uh, of course, many thanks to all the members of our community who supported and uh, continues to support my work. Uh, have a great day. Have a great day and um, take care. This evening, dear friends, five or six o'clock uh, live stream. I will. Uh, I will notify you, I will notify our community on a community page on YouTube and also on my uh, Telegram channel about uh, live streams. So, hope to see you there. Bye for now.